Hello. Hi, uh, my name is Akira. Thank you for joining us uh, for a special noodle class. Uh, we are broadcasting again from Yamato headquarters in Japan. Um, so my name is Akira. I'm going to be your host uh, for this class. And uh, this is Megumi. Um, so she's going to be making noodles. And uh, um, well, actually, today's uh, noodles will be like kalgusu, which is a um, pretty popular um, Korean uh, noodles. And uh, what she's making making it fresh uh, on uh, our noodle machines. And uh, so we're starting um, this uh, online class and then uh, this is gonna be the 17th uh, class we're doing today. And uh, it's, it's not gonna be a Japanese uh, noodle cuisine, but like, you know, it's gonna be Korean. And I'm gonna be explaining uh, the reason we're doing the Korean noodle dish today uh, in a minute. Um, but before we start uh, this class, uh, I'd like to, <clears throat> I'd like to uh, talk about a little bit about like uh, ourselves a little bit. Um, for uh, those of you who don't know much about us, uh, we are um, 45 years in this business of uh, noodles. Um, basically started out as a noodle manufa uh, manufacturer of noodle making machines. Um, but about 20 years ago, we started uh, this noodle school that teaches um, basically Japanese noodle cuisines, uh, udon, ramen, um, from soba from scratch. And we have um, customers using our machines like in 61 countries. And, and uh, we also have you know, graduates from our schools um, uh, successfully operating the noodle restaurants in different countries. Um, we have uh, eight locations in Japan. Um, we have uh, office in Seoul, Korea. This, this is the, uh, one of the reasons we are doing the um, Kalgus noodle today. We have, um, um, office in Singapore, Netherlands, United States. We have uh, partners in different countries. And uh, we, so we basically help um, all these customers um, develop noodle recipes that become noodle masters and that um, all these noodles that help their businesses um, different ways. So, you know, we, we are basically a group of uh, noodle experts that can help you, um, you know, uh, develop your noodle uh, business and prospering in noodle businesses. So we're talking about kalgukusu uh, today. I'm not really, I, I'm sure like I'm not pronouncing that correctly, but like, um, but the reason why we are uh, doing this class today on kalgukusu, uh, which is one of the most popular uh, Korean noodle dishes that, um, so I personally like it so much. And I believe that this noodle dish is very versatile like ramen which has so many variations and a lot of potentials to be global food. Kalgus also has so many variations and regional specialties in Korea. And so you, you know, you may be able to like apply and then make it and offer it in your place. So that, that's the main reason that we started um, doing this class today. So we're gonna talk about what the Kalgus is and history types and trends and What's important for good bubble kalgusu um, ingredients methods? And we're going to talk about noodles, um, you know, ingredients production processes, and uh, we're going to make kalgusu like from scratch on the noodle machines. And um, we're going to move to kitchen, and we're going to show how uh, how to put together like dishes of kalgusu. And we're going to do a quick a quick session in the last. So if you have any questions during the class. Um, you know, please feel free to uh, send them in the comments. So, um, so we have an office, you know, as I said, like in the city of Seoul, and we have supported our customers in Korea for many years, and I have several customers serving delicious kalgusu dishes there. And having worked with them so many years, uh, we have developed some expertise in kalgusu, some of which we would like to share with you today. And we have a colleague named John, who's been in charge of operations in Korea for several past several years. And she's the one who actually put together today's class. And she also has a lot of experiences in other types of Korean noodle dishes, as well as Japanese noodle dishes. So like what those of you like who are interested in like discussing your needs with her, like uh, please feel free to contact us. So let's start talking about kalagutsu. It's a, it's a Korean popular noodle, uh, soup noodle dish that may be like particularly popular when it's cold. Um, so we think it's a good, uh, good addition to your existing menu in the coming cold month. 
Kalu means uh, knife and guksu means noodles. So kalu guksu means knife cut noodles, and it's especially by hand. The noodles are similar to certain types of udon noodles in Japan because the ingredients and hydration are very similar. The biggest difference is that the kalgusu are cooked in a soup, although udon noodles are cooked separately in boiling water. Uh, that's basically to release most of the salt. Like fresh Japanese noodles contain a lot of salt, build good texture dough. So this is the reason the soup is a bit cloudy, mainly from the starch dissolved from the noodles. Um, there's something to talk about, like just a brief history of kalgusu. So in Korea, right, noodles used to be luxury food and only consumed by noblemen in old days. So it was usually difficult for common people to eat noodles. But they could have janchi guksu, which means banquet noodles on a special occasion like wedding. Noodles are commonly accepted as blessed food, as noodles being long signifies longevity. During the Cold Korean War, uh, wheat was imported to Korea from the United States in large quantities. Using the wheat, kalgusu spread across the country because it was easy to make wheat into the noodles. So in old days, noodles were cooked in boiling water, washed in cold water to remove starch. People would pour soy sauce-based broth and add toppings to eat the noodles. But today, uh, there are two ways. So the old way was that, you know, they cooked the noodles separately, but like another way, new way is like one noodles are cooked in the soup without wash. When cooking noodles in the new way, noodles are cooked in soup from the beginning. The starch of the noodles melt in the soup, which makes the noodles sticky and cloudy. This is a special type of, um, there's a special type of kalgus called the uh, andong gukshi, which cooks noodles and soup separately. Like, like Japanese udon noodles. Kalaguksu is a noodle soup that dish that's uh, also high in salty level because the salt in the noodles is dissolved in the soup, you know, because it's, we, we cook the noodles in the soup from the beginning. So in the south, the soup is made of seafood and the noodles tend to be thick. In the north, the noodles are thin, served in soup made of uh, pork, beef bones and or chicken. Andong uh, the tradition dish, which is popular in the East, and the noodles are made of wheat and kinako, which is a uh, roasted soy flour. Some ex-president liked kalgusu, and then congressmen often ate them, and the United States president, like, who visited Korea, tried them as well. Um, there are m many variations of kalgusu, and then I'm going to just start, talk about, like, talk well, then, uh, several of them. Um, red bean kalgusu that features noodles in red bean soup, that you can add salt or sugar to season it. Jian kalgusu features Korean miso soup in which noodles are cooked. The noodles are usually flat. And donggukshi is a traditional dish that we just talked about, um, features clear and light broth that you add kimchi and the other uh, served along the, with the dish. Seafood kalgusu, the soups are made of a varied variety of seafoods such as dried sardine, kelp, clam, shrimp, oysters, and others with noodles as thick as Japanese tanuki udon. Beef kalgusu, beef leg bones are slowly cooked for many hours to make the soup. It's usually uh, cloudy white. The noodles are usually thin and flat. Pork kalgusu, almost like uh, Hakata Tonko style ramen soup noodle dish that features cloudy white soup made of pork bones and meat. The noodles are medium sized but without kansui. In kalgusu, the soup is made up by cooking chicken bones and meat for uh, some hours. The noodles are relatively thin and flat. And beef steak plant, kalgusu that, this is a soup, is a bit viscous and creamy with the powders of beef steak plants. The noodles are thick. The soups and toppings vary from region to region, as each region has its own specialty crops and foods. And Busan City and South Region tend to use rice sardine. Jeolla, Jeolla province tends to be seafood style and famous for red bean kalgusu. Gyeonggi province, where Seoul City is, tends to have more of the chicken and beef kalgusu. Kalgusu served in Seoul City tends to be beef bone-based soup with beef meat on top. 
There are Jiang kalgusu that uses Korean miso. Gyeongnam province, northeast of South Korea. Um, Bibin kalgusu. Bibin means mix, which may be similar to mazamen. Uh, beef steak, plant kalgusu are famous. Because kalgusu is a type of Korean cuisine, which is famous for banchan. Banchan is a collective name for small dishes that, that are served along with the main meal. The contents really depend on the restaurant, but there may be a few types of kimchi, which is a fermented vegetable seasoned with chili peppers, salt, and sometimes sugar, and others. The mulu, uh, which is a vegetable cooked in different ways and seasoned with sesame oil, uh, salt, vinegar, uh, minced garlic, soy sauce, etc. Other types of banchan, many of which offer strong flavors and taste. A lot of kalgusu specialty shops serve uh, their main meals uh, with a variety of banchan, which you can uh, eat along with the noodle dishes or add them to the noodle soups to alter the taste and flavors after going halfway through. It may be why the soups or kalgusu are usually lightly seasoned. So, <clears throat> famous kalgusu specialty shops or restaurants. Um, <clears throat> What they, what they have in common are the, oh no, they serve gyoza and kimchi, and that, that's part of the banchan. The taste of the kimchi are unique, and the noodles have some characteristics that help them stand apart from other shops. Um, Myeongdong gyoza. Myeongdong gyoza uh, was established in 1966. Um, the shop is like very uh, popular and they making you know, long lines all day long uh, from in front of shops. And it's, it's famous not only to Korean, but like also to foreigners. And it's famous for the heavy broth made of uh, chicken meat and kimchi that's strong with garlic and chili pepper flavors. So Hojun, uh, famous for the white soup that's made of uh, beef bones with thin noodles and kimchi that uses beef steak plant leaves. This shop got famous particularly because uh, some ex-Korean president <laughs> frequented. <laughs> the veteran kalgusu are famous for its beef steak plant kalgusu, which features the soup. That's, that's viscous from the starch of the noodles and eggs scrambled and half cooked in the soup, topped with beef steak plant powder, uh, chili powder, and the shreds of nori. And meal soup, uh, famous for its andong gukshi, which is uh, usually pricey because of uh, the beef bone broth. But this shop offers the same andong gukshi style dish at half the price. Shandong Kalgusu was opened in 1988. It's famous for the light broth made of clams and other she shells with thick noodles. It's, almost, it's also famous for handmade gyoza. It was was listed in on Michelin Guide for two years. So, so components of kalgusu, uh, it, it consists of noodles, right? Um, that are uh, mainly made of wheat flour, salt, water, and other flavoring materials like vegetables and herbs. And soups, are, soups that are made of various types of seafoods, um, chicken, beef bones, pork, mushrooms, and other vegetables, and toppings. Usually, um, the toppings are usually uh, cooked and seasoned ingredients that are used to make the broth. Kalguksu is usually served with a few types of banchan, typically certain types of kimchi, namu, and others. Because uh, these banchan are strongly flavored, uh, seasoned, adding them to kalguksu helps change the flavor of the soup and season it. Because the noodles, which contain certain amount of salt are cooked in the soup. The soup is very, I mean, made very light on, on purpose. The cook, cooking noodles in the soup season the soup, right, with that salt dissolved from the noodles. So we, we should also think about the flavors, salt, taste from each of the banchan side dishes served along with the bowl when thinking about the balance of the uh, taste and flavors of the bowl. <laughs> And so this is a list, just a list of like ingredients that can be used for each component of kalgusu dishes. And uh, we, yes, we, we got them from uh, John, our um, Korean uh, colleagues. 
and I, I'm not I'm not gonna go over like of like each of them and it's like you can just uh take a look and then uh if you if you wanna know more about them like you can um you know let us know um by uh sending us the uh in the in the question comments. Okay, so let's talk about noodles that are suitable for kalgusu and um course, like there are many variations, but like kalgus may be similar to Japanese udon noodles uh, in texture, um, hydration, um, like protein content of the flour, the flour use, and uh, noodle size. And um, so we, we use this chart like to describe different types of noodles and then um, uh, kalgus, because kalgus is like kind of similar to Japanese udon noodles, um, you can see that that big circle, like which means that like there are many variations in terms of like noodle texture. Um, hydration ratio is a high, on the higher end, which makes this noodle soft. Um, hydration ratio basically like a, is a, a horizontal line, and the vertical line uh, represents the protein content of the flour to make this noodle. And for the protein content of the flour, that's low, which means that this noodle is soft. Um, for the noodle size, that are lined up, these numbers like that are lined up like on the right right hand side of the chart. Um, then on from the top, like being very thin, like one millimeter, to the bottom, like thick five millimeter. And you can see that this noodle is on a thicker side. Um, so it's very similar to uh, uh, tsuke men or dipping noodle or um, the udon noodle. But um, but like size or like a shape or like um, you know we 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 say like you know cross section but noodles um, thickness times width it, it tends to be flat um, maybe because the 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 soup of the kalgusu is uh, pretty light in taste so that you know having kind of flat surface kind of larger surface. You know, allows us to like, you know, allows it to like hold more soup, right? So that you know, kind of it, it kind of helps us um, taste more of the soup part noodle uh, strand. Okay, um, start talking about ingredients, and um, so unlike ramen noodles, uh, you know, the kalgus like like udon noodles, you know, that it doesn't use kansui. Instead, it uses uh, salt to um, tighten the gluten structure. So the types of like ingredients that are typically used are uh, wheat flour, uh, water, and salt. But not as much salt as we would um, put into um, udon noodles, Japanese udon noodles. And sometimes some recipes like call for uh, tapioca starch, which makes the, the noodle texture uh, chewier. Talking about wheat flour, um, so we talked about in the chart, uh, the higher the protein, the harder the noodle texture. And for kalguksu noodle, that's uh, in the lower side, like um, lower sides, like you know, like udon noodles. So that's seven percent, maybe like up to like ten and max. So and the ash is um, how, how much minerals uh, is contained in the flour, and um, it's higher the ash. The uh, dark, darker the noodle, kind of noodles, and for kalguksu noodles, I eat usually like white, whitish color. So um, the ash content is like uh, is should be low, on the lower side. And viscosity is um, it tells you like how elastic the noodles may become, and um, because like similar to udon noodles, so it's uh, the viscosity should be high, like you know making it like elastic. Kind of flexible, um, soft and flexible, and so you should use the flour of the high viscosity value. But this value is not shown in the product label, so you have to uh, measure it on a special device, um, which we have at our headquarters. So if you have some flowers that you want to test for this uh, value, then you can send it to us, and then we can test it for you. So it's a free of charge. So three things like protein, ash, viscosity that you have to remember um, how to consider like when trying to find a good flour for kalgusu noodles. So this picture um, shows 
uh, uh, dough conditions of varying hydration. So basically, like you know, we categorize the noodle um, types by hydration ratio into like three: uh, low, medium, high. And so basically, the kalgusu belongs to uh, high hydration ratio noodles, and um, that's over like 40%. 40% means to the weight of flour. So like 40% means, so if you're doing like 10 kilograms of uh, flour batch, per batch, then you have four kilograms of, um, you're adding like four kilograms of liquid to it. So you get like 14 kilograms of uh, dough in total, but inside 14 kilograms, you have four kilograms of liquid. So that's what the 40% means. And basically, the higher the hydration, the shorter the mixing time. And examples are like tsukemen, udon noodles, and other types of ramen noodles and soba noodles. Another thing I want to talk about, like, in the water, in terms of water, is that, like, um, so we usually use soft water um, for cooking of noodles and for cooking of stocks. It's because um, cooking noodles, you know, we have some ingredients like kansu in, t in, uh, in case of ramen noodles, uh, salt in case of kalgusu. Um, so these ingredients need to be released to the cooking water because if you if if it doesn't, then um, when you eat the noodles, then they like it's very very salty, right? So it has to release it to the cooking be released to the cooking water. And but like if you cooking them like hard water, like hard water contains this all these minerals like calcium, like magnesium. So there's rest room for these uh, ingredients to be released to. So it takes time, right? When we, when we cook the noodles like for a long time, then the noodles melts, the surface of the noodle melts, and we lose some of the noodles um, which, which dissolve in the cooking water. And uh, so, you know, it's, there's, uh, the yield of the cooked cook noodles is not good. So, Bad noodle texture, uh, less yield. There's nothing good about like using hot water, like when cooking uh, noodles, cooking stocks. So you have to work with the hot water. Then you should use uh, softener, water softener, to soften it. Other ingredients. So salt, we have. We say like you know we have to use it for kalgus noodles, but like not as much as we would use for, um, for example, like udon noodles. Uh, other ingredients like um, maybe like some eggs, um, like culling, uh, flavoring agent. Um, uh, I've seen like some kagusu shops like do um, the uh, some some kind of herbs like kneaded into them. So uh, wheat flour, rye flour, like some local grain flour. Um, you know the tapioca starch like to make it chewy. start talking about um, production processes. And this slide, um, it's, it describes production processes of just, just for the dough. Uh, so be, basically, like the building, like, kind of describe, like, foundation of, like, a good uh, noodles and good texture noodles. And uh, so we have to weigh first, right, uh, each ingredients first, separately. So we eat flour, uh, salt, water, Maybe like tapioca starch, right? Um, uh, we measure we measure these all each of these ingredients by weight for for its precision. Because if you measure like visually, like you know by looking at like you know the volume of the water and stuff, it's it's not precise. So um, because we want to be consistent in the quality, right, of um, the noodles that we make. So we want to uh, measure everything by weight. Mixing, uh, so blending of uh, solid ingredients and uh, liquid ingredients, mixing, and um, um, the purpose of mixing is like uh, good hydration of these all these ingredients. Uh, the resting, I'm going to talk about uh, in the next slide more in details. Rough forming, so we make a, a rough sheet of dough, you combine them. Um, so we separate the rough sheet of dough and then combine them, combine them like into sheet one sheet to make it firm. And we may do like some uh, second resting process. And this is, uh, these are the process like we do like for uh, on that like Rami machine. Uh, but for Udo machine, like it would be like a bit different. 
um, the resting process. The resting process is like is very important in building good texture or good instruction dough. And there are three or types like stages of the resting process in noodle making. But the most important one is the first um, resting process that's usually done after mixing process. So after mixing liquid and solid ingredients, we we um, we apply the uh, resting process by placing the dough in a plastic bag and seal it and let it sit for some time. And we should seal it to keep it from drying. During resting process, like four things are happening in the dough. First, like, like high hydration of flour. So hydrated dough in the mixing process still is now equally hydrated. So resting helps distribute liquid to the parts that are not hydrated well. And then easy on gluten. Uh, resting process literally less dough. So especially in the gluten, the gluten structure, which has been stressed during the mixing process. So it makes the gluten ready to take on the next process without getting um, well, too, too stressed. Um, the next process. So degassing, the, there are some air bubbles inside dough which may burst during the cooking, which um, undermine the noodle texture. So we want to remove as many uh, bubbles as possible, like as we can during this process. And activation of enzyme. So enzyme contain the wheat, adds good flavor to the dough. Resting helps activate the enzyme, but we should be careful not to make it too active or too inactive. But basically the higher the temperature, the more active the enzyme becomes. So the temperature is a, is a very important. And there's a correlation between like resting time and temperature. Basically the higher the temperature, the less time we need to rest your dough to apply good effect to resting on dough. The higher the hydration, the more important the resting is to build good uh, texture in the dough. So after the resting process, all we have to do is just thin it, thin it to the final thickness, and we, we cut it, we add a portion it, and we cook them. And in case of kagusu, like we may cook them in, uh, um, you know, the soup from the beginning. Okay, so that's speaks what I had for the slides. But like um, before we go, like we, I want to talk about a little bit about. Um, the benefits of homemade noodles. Um, let's say you're a restaurant, right? Um, by um, you know, serving, serving noodles, and if you have two choices, like you you can buy noodles from a vendor, and you can make your own noodles. If you buy noodles from a vendor, um, the price of like one serving would be like you know maybe like 50 cents in US dollars. And if you make noodles by yourself, like the cost of like making just one serving of noodles, maybe like that's 20 cents US dollars, right? So, so you're looking at like like 50 to 60 percent saving in saving, and then you know, think about like how like you know how many servings of noodle like you're gonna sell in a month, in a year, and you know, think about like the total in saving. And so you can you can serve like better noodles at lower cost. Like you can definitely make um, better noodles in terms of quality, taste, flavor. And you can have total control over quality, right? Um, you know, you know what you are putting into your noodles, so um, you, know, you have total qual quality. So like you can be confident in the quality of the noodles that you're serving, selling, and you can provide more value to the customers because like your you know, the, it costs you like just 20 cents to make one portion of noodles. So, you know, you, you may be, you know, you may be willing to just like give like additional noodles like for free of charge or something. You know, that, that, uh, that makes you know, customers happy. And you can create unique, develop unique products because you, nothing stops you, right, from using different ingredients, um, you know, making different like kind of unique textures in the noodles. And you can show your customers like how you make noodles from scratch, and that kind of that's like kind of like an entertaining factor. Um, so you know, just customers are curious as to like how you make noodles, you know, from scratch. You know, what kind of flour you're using locally, uh, sauce flours, like ingredients you're using. It's very uh, you know attractive point, and um, 
So this is a kind of typical setup, like, you know, they have probably some small setup that you can have, like, for, um, you know, a craft for a noodle production setup. And it's like, so it doesn't take much space. And in this setup, like, you can probably make, like, up to, you know, 100 serving, I mean, 500 servings in, in a day or something. So it's very uh, small setup. Okay. Um, so before we start um, making kalgusu noodles on our noodle machines, um, I just want to talk about, uh, you know, doing these online classes is great, but, like, um, one thing that's really bad about it is that, like, well, you know, we can't, you, get, you we can't let you guys try these uh, noodles that we make during these classes. So, um, but for those of you like who are kind of living nearby or like you know, who have some access to these locations where we have offices that where we have like noodle, different types of noodle making uh, machines, you know, we could provide demos. We could provide, um, we, we could like maybe like ma mail some of the from the fresh noodles to you. And so, if you're interested in trying them, like um, feel free to um, contact us, and then we'll, we'll try our best to like make them available to you guys. So, all right, so let's uh, start making noodles. And so, this is our HK office, and here's here are um, ingredients that we we talked about. So this is a wheat flour. Um, the protein content is um, relatively low, or uh, very similar to like udon, what, what we use for udon noodles. And this is this is tapioca starch, and it's like five percent to the total weight of uh, flour. And then this is the, so these are the solid ingredients, these two, and um, this is a four kilogram batch, four batch of four kilograms, and this is water salt and it's a lot of salt actually but like this is just a three percent to the total uh solid weight so and then this is 42 percent hydration 42 percent inside 42 percent uh we're gonna add three percent of uh salt in it so the actual amount of water is actually um 42 minus three so like 39 percent to the weight of flour <laughs> So you can do the math. So we are making um, just a dough first, like in this uh, mixer. This is a 10 kilograms mixer. Um, that means that the maximum batch that you can do in this mixer is uh, just 10 kilograms of uh, solid flour. And on top of that, you're adding uh, liquid to it. So for example, like if it's 42% liquid, you can add 4.2 kilograms of liquid to the 10 kilograms of uh, flour, so you're getting about 14 kilograms of dough at the time from this mixer. Okay, so let's first um, mix it for four minutes. But we'll, we'll just add um, just to run like two thirds of the liquid first. And then you see like how the liquid is like dripping through the small holes. And it just adds the liquid like little by little to the flour to sort of like render, uh, facilitate the uh, good hydration. Yeah, we, we can keep watching it, but like, you know, we don't have that much time. So uh, let's start the next process. Um, so you can see that Megumi like prepared this dough right in advance. And it, so that's how you do the 
horse resting. So putting it in a plastic bag and letting it sit at room temperature for maybe like an hour. Look at the size of the look at the size of the dough. Like that's pretty pretty big actually for this to be handled like in this uh, this like ramen machine because ramen machine is ramen noodle making machine is like designed to do uh, ramen noodles that are typically um, low in hydration. It's a dry dry noodle, like which means that like the noodles are hard, hard in texture. So, you know, this this type of machine is not really, I mean, expecting to do this type of noodles that are that are like very soft. And so it's um it's rather like difficult um, for this type of machine to handle this type of noodles, this type of dough that's high in wa uh, water content, hydration. But um, but you can you can still make it. You can still make it in noodles. So in fact, uh, you can make um, you know pasta that's high in hydration. You can make like udon noodles, you know, which is typically high in hydration. And of course, like tsukemen noodles, dipping noodles as well. So what she's doing is that like she's feeding dough into the into a set of rollers and to make a um, rough sheet of dough. Rough sheet of dough means, you know, it's still, I mean, it's, it's pretty weak. I mean, you can, you can tear it apart like pretty easily. But, you know, it's a start. And so we're just forming the uh, sheet of dough first from the crumbles of dough. But for the first rounds of this sheeting process, we, we want to go slow because we want to apply um, good pressure into the into the dough. So if it's uh, the dough is like low in hydration, like like tonkotsu noodles, like thin and hard noodles, then that like a condition of dough is like it's very powdery. It's very powdery. It's almost like it's almost like you know there's no liquid added to it. Almost like a dry flour, but like um, that's a kind of dough. This um, this machine, this type of machine is like very good at processing. And because uh, this machine is um, equipped with um, big rollers, big rollers that are designed to process uh, a kind of like hard dough. So it's, uh, but you know, this, this type of dough is, is not really, uh, isn't really like, what uh, what this uh, machine is good at like doing, but like, but some I mean, like high hydration dough is uh, made. I mean, the noodles made on this type of machine is actually very good as well. Very good in texture, like tastes very good. So it's just that like you need to like kind of get used to it, like get used to, like how you. I uh, need to handle this type of dough, this kind of machine. And so you, you need a little bit more probably practice to uh, make these kind of noodles on this kind of machine than uh, you know, making uh, such noodles as like uh, kind of low hydration noodles, medium hydration noodles.
So it's going through the first sheeting process called um, rough forming. So that's a for a week sheet of dough, and but we're going to separate it into two separate sheets of dough, and then putting them together through the rollout and to make them make them farm. So the dough that that's coming out. If you can see the surface of it, like it's very smooth and it's definitely stronger. So it's almost like doubling them, like kind of, kind of making making layers of um, making two layers of dough and feeding them into the rollers. That's uh, whose clearance is like, set to the certain um, thickness. So we, we combine them, right? We combine them like once, but we want to do it twice to make it further uh, for the farm. And then, because um, that, that in a way, like it still kind of like helps like develop like green structure inside dough as well. So we set the, uh, so from second combining process, after the dough was going through like second combining process, we want to start, we want to start dusting it. We want to start dusting it because like from this point on, we don't, we don't want it to stick together. We don't want them to stick together. So we want to dust it. And because it's like, it's very sticky because it's soft, like it's very wet. So we want to dust like a good amount of good amount of like powder, good amount of flour on it to make sure that it wouldn't stick. So after the second combine process, right, um, all we have to do is just thin it, thin it to the final thickness. But we can't, we can't thin it like drastically at once. We need to like thin it gradually. Otherwise that would uh, just kind of damage the gluten structure inside dough. So we want to go gradually thin it. So we are thinning it for the second time. And they're going faster. Can you can you see we're going faster? So after like second combined post, like we wanted to go slow because we wanted to apply like really good pressure. 
are going slow. Like after that, the good instruction inside though is like kind of complete. So it can go faster in this uh, sheeting process. Okay, so I think can we just start cutting it? So the kind of cutter that we use to make the noodle strands is that this kind of cutter that looks like um, paper shredder, and you see the groups. So each, each groove is actually in this cutter like it's three millimeter in um, width. So the sheet of those fit to the cutter and comes out like little strands. And each of the little strands is gonna be like three millimeter in width. The thickness is we adjust by the uh, roll-up gap. So we're gonna cutting it, and then um, so she just mounted uh, mounted the duster like over the uh, the conveyor to apply uh, dusting onto um, the noodles that are coming out. Okay, so noodles are coming now, and. And um, you can you can very easily um, change the serving size. The serving size is basically determined by the length of the noodles, and then you can you can easily adjust the length of the noodle shorter to make it um, smaller serving, to longer to make it um, bigger serving. And as you can see, that this is, you know, as we talk about like kagyusu noodles are typically flat. It may be because the soup of the kagyusu is typically light in taste, right? Um, so I, I think the surface is like flat surface because the flat surface like gives you like kind of, you know, larger areas that hold soup, more soup. So, that that may be what okay so what what we want to show you is that we use like kagus noodles are high in hydration ratio so we want to show you the uh, how we make um, how we make them on uh, Udon machine, 
I make an Udo machine. So Udo machine, this type of machine, like we call Udo machine, and then this is designed to do um, high hydration noodles. And this is also like only one machine that like you, know, you can make everything from scratch, but like high in hydration, like hydration we're talking about would be like over uh, 45%. So you can see that like the size of the chunks of noodles, like chunks of dough are even bigger and even softer than the, the dough we just did. And this is a 52% hydration ratio dough. It's very, see like it's almost, it's very white. And then what she's doing now is that like we are you're pressing it. You're pressing the dough in the press machine. And um, so this, this press machine uh, actually mimics, it mimics the design to mimic the, uh, like a foot stomping, foot stomping of the dough, uh, which, uh, which is actually still like done by like some of the, some of the udon shops that we have in here in Kagawa. And, um, you know, of course, like there's some like a uh, protective layer of the sheet, like over the dough. You know, it's like the feet like do not touch like directly um, the dough, but like, um, but people still do it uh, that way, like here. And then this um, device, the presser, uh, mimics the mimics the job of like uh, foot pressing. And then, so she she folded folded them folded it inwards and then press it again. Because this presser, this pressing machine is like very, very convenient because if you do that manually, you have to do it like thoroughly. So um, it takes your time, energy. Um, so it's, it's very, it's very convenient to use this type of device to, um, to press it. And, and in a way, uh, we are, it's, a, it's a actually helping to um, develop the good structure inside dough as well. At the same time, it, it's making farm. So we usually do it like three to five times, depending on the condition of the dough. And the reason why we have separate machines for, you know, udon noodles, like, um, because this, this machine is capable of like making um, certain types of ramen noodles as well. So why we, why we have like separate machines for, for example, if you do the ramen noodles like on this machine, right? Is that like uh, the, the, the texture of the noodles are different. So it's, it's soft. It's so like it's hydration, high hydration noodles. So it's the softer side, so the softer side, but like it's chewier and um, it's, it's more elastic. It's, it's very different from like the, or even like high hydration ramen noodles that you made on the ramen machine. It's different, like noodle texture is different. And of course, like udon noodles that are made on ramen machines, the noodle texture is different from the noodle, udon noodles made on this udon machine. So, so she's uh, dividing them to dividing into um, few pieces to put it put it into the aging machine. So we have to rest it. We have to rest the dough at actually 18 degrees Celsius for overnight. And 
So we can't wait uh, for one night. So she prepared the, uh, the dough yesterday. And so it's like it's, it's, been, it's been rested overnight. So it looks delicious, you know. And then, so she's um, going to process it into noodles. So as I said, like Kagoshi noodles are very similar to udon noodles, and um, I think uh, noodles made, like Kagoshi noodles made on this udon machine is, I think, closer, closer to um, the, the authentic Kagoshi noodles um, than, uh, you know, Kagoshi noodles we just made on the ramen machine. Yes, this um, machine, the, this roller part, this roll uh, sheeting, sheeting device um, is designed to kind of mimic the hand, hand noodle making, especially like in the double like sheeting part. Because the rollers that are used in this uh, device are small, like in diameter, right? So that doesn't pressure, that doesn't like apply like too, too much pressure. And so like that's the that pressure, the amount of pressure that's being added to the dough is like similar to the pressure, you know, the noodle master, the human being like would be, be applying to the dough. So that's why this um, machine is, probably noodles that are made on this machine are probably closer, kind of quality, like texture um, to the authentic Hagus noodles that are made by hand. So the noodles are thinned a little by little, right? And it, if you can, if you can check the uh, the number here, numbers that are displayed here. If you can check the numbers that are displayed here. What's showing is that like it's the thickness that's going through the sensor uh, of the. Um, that are, that are set like being rolled, like the thickness of the dough like being uh, sheeted. Right now it's showing like 5.6 millimeter, 5.4.9 millimeter. So you can you can see like you can actually see how thick the noodle uh, dough is by looking at the display. So it's getting thinner and thinner, right? And so I think it's reached the final thickness. So because it's because it's too too large, right? It's five point zero millimeter thickness doubled. So each sheet uh, should be two point five millimeter in thickness. And so. It's, it's too large, right, for um, for the for the cutter. So we need to fold it. We need to fold it to make it fit to the cutter. And I like I like the cutter we saw, like that are you know that's used in the ramen machine. This machine uses a cutter that's kind of like a knife kind of shape cutter. So like. So that that's that's more of like you know hand making. That's more of the cutter that's using hand making. So that's uh, another reason that I'm saying you know the noodles that are made on this machine are more authentic. So the noodles are being cut right, and each noodle strands is like being being dropped into a sheet. 
tray that's moving, moving side to side, moving from side to side, and like kind of collecting the noodles being dropped from the top. That, that way, uh, this tray is uh, kind of lining up the, each of the noodle strands like nicely. Okay, so voila, that's that's a cargo noodle. Like they're more more authentic than. Uh, Kagus noodles made on the ramen machine. But of course, like Kagus noodles made on the ramen machine are also, also very good as well. It's, they're just uh, different in uh, terms like noodle texture. Okay, so these are uh, freshly made Authentic Congress noodles. Okay, so um, before we go to the kitchen, um, so these are the these are also like Congress noodles, like prepared. And, no. Ah, sorry. Uh, so like kinako needed, like roasted like soy uh, powder, kinako. Some, some of the actual kagusu dishes like uh, use this type of um, noodles as well. Yeah, we need it. It's I, I can actually smell the flavor of kinako. Okay, uh, it's uh, it's smooth. Kinako is like usually used for um, it's like a Japanese. Um, snack sweets and it's, it has like very kind of sweet like flavor and then it's very good um, and the color is like kind of slight and the subtle it's very good all right um, let's go to a kitchen and um, we have our instructor waiting and it's going to show us uh, how to put together a bowl of Okago soup noodles and so we have, so this kitchen is used for um, our noodle schools. Um, we do like ramen school, uh, udon school here. And so we have, um, so we have, for example, like induction cookers. Um, we have like big induction cookers, like 10 of them. And so these induction cookers allow us to um, cook uh, such stocks as like, you know, Thick tonkotsu stocks, um, heavy, you know, chicken broth, and like so. Each each of these uh, induction cookers are like being cooking um, different ingredients, and so students can try how each of the ingredient, uh, how each of the stock like tastes, right? And so like they can put them together, and uh, in a way that like that makes the uh, their own unique recipes. And so we, 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 we have basically like a lab where, you know, we, we make everything from scratch and uh, each student can try, you know, every single ingredients and then play with them. Um, and then finally, like we each can come up with like uh, their final recipes and, and they can take home like different recipes, noodles, like soups, toppings, and then like the whole, um, uh, uh, complete recipes and then they can work with like different other other students who also have like unique recipes uh, they're, they're developing so you know they, they can probably share with them and so it's a uh, it's a very good uh, class that you can learn like in a short period of time like which is like six days okay uh, so let me introduce our instructors so mr. Mr. Ikeda, the chief instructor of this class, school, and so he has a background in Chinese cuisine, and which is like similar to like ramen. So um, it's a kind of natural for him to um, kind of do the uh, ramen school, and he also does like udon school. 
Um, he's a very good teacher and uh, lucky to have him uh, at our school. And um, so, and then he also have like background like nah, like a culinary school instructor. So um, you know, it's it's very natural for him to like kind of speaking to you as a teacher uh, in a culinary standpoint. So thank you, Mr. Akeda. Uh Mr. Sun. Um, so but he he's been with us like just for a short period of time, like a uh, few months. But like you know, he's uh, very very good. Uh, he's proven to be like very good instructor. So um, and then. Um, the best thing about him is that, like, you know, he's uh, was like fluent in Chinese, and so for those of you who are more comfortable like speaking Chinese, and then like um, definitely um, you know contact him for questions that you, you wanna wanna know more about. Okay, thank you, Mr. Sun. And so Mr. Takeuchi, um, he called him Thomas, and he's from the uh, Vancouver, BC, Canada. Um, so he speaks of English and. Um, He's uh, been with us for as an instructor for uh, the past few years. He's a very, very good teacher, and then uh, has a background in uh, Japanese cuisine. And so, um, how well lucky to have him like teaching this class, uh, how to show him like how to put together like the bokagusu today. So, thank you, Thomas. Thank you, Akira. Once again, my name is Thomas. I'm one of the instructors at the Yamato Middle School. And today I'll be talking about, I'll be showing you how to make kawagutsu noodle. Um, this is not my field, but I'll be showing you our take, Yamato's take on kawagutsu. Um, kawagutsu. And we're going to be using, so today we'll be making seafood kawagutsu. So the ingredients we're going to be using are... First of all, clam, and for the vegetables, we have sliced leek, sliced potato, zucchini, carrots, and green bell pepper. And for the noodles, um, it's the kalguksu noodles with some soy powder in it. And for the seasoning, it's very simple. Uh, we have meeting, light soy sauce, salt, and some ginger. I'm sorry, garlic. And for the dashi, we're going to use kelp and sardine dashi. So th these are the ingredients we're gonna be using for the kalguksu. So let's get going. Uh, first, I'm just gonna be making one portion today. So I'll be taking 500 grams of this dashi, dry sardines and kelp dashi. So we got the dashi, 500 grams. And first thing we're going to do is uh, season the dashi. So I'm going to heat up the dashi and add in the light soy sauce, 15 grams. We use light soy sauce because uh, I want to keep that color light. I don't want it to make make it like soy sauce color. So I want to keep that dashi color as much as possible. So I'm using light soy sauce. And I'm going to add in that sweetness with the meeting. And some salt. And lastly, a little bit of uh, garlic. I'm going to mix the dashi and I'm going to add in potato slices. 
because this is going to take the longest to cook, so I'm just going to put this in first. And I'm just going to wait for that dashi to boil. So dashi started boiling. So I'm just going to lower the heat and I'm just going to add in the rest of the vegetables. So zucchini, sliced leeks, green bell pepper, and some carrots. And I'm going to wait for the dashi to boil again. And then we're going to add in the noodles. And the biggest difference between um, kalguksu and all the other noodle dishes, like pasta, ram, uh, ramen, uh, udon, soba, is that for kalguksu, you boil and cook the noodles in the dashi. So most noodle dishes, you usually boil the noodles in different boiling water. But for kalguksu, you, the noodles goes directly into the dashi. So this is going to allow the noodles to soak up the tasty dashi. And also, um, the noodles, um, the starch from the noodles is going to lightly thicken the sauce. So it's going to be the dashi will be picked up more when you're uh, eating it. Hey, okay, once the dashi starts boiling again, now I'm going to add in the clam. This goes in last because you don't want to overcook the clam. So you put in the clams and just lightly mix. And I'm going to simmer it for maybe two to three minutes. So we're cooking the, fully cooking the noodles and also extracting flavor from the vegetables and umami from the clams. The noodles will like nicely soak up the dashi as well. And the dashi is a lot thicker than the beginning because of the starch from the noodles. Maybe one more minute, uh, less than a minute, like 30 seconds. Clams should start to open up. I think it, sh it should be ready now. So I'm going to plate it to this bowl. And first, I like to take the noodles. So I'll try to take all the noodles first. And then next dashi and lastly the toppings in the middle and lastly going to put some thinly sliced leek on top. And top on top of the leek, I'm gonna put some thinly sliced chili pepper for a nice red. Okay, 
So I'm going to serve it with kimchi as well. So this is uh, our take, Yamato's take on kalguksu, seafood kalguksu. <clears throat> Oh, we have a question. If if the dashi is anchovy dashi, yes, it's anchovies and kelp. So what I did was I soaked the anchovies, dry anchovies and kelp, in the water for over a day, overnight, and then I heat it up until it's 60 degrees. <clears throat> now it's cooled down, but I heat it up to 60 degrees to extract all the umami, but never boil that uh, anchovy and kelp dashi because that's going to extract all the bitterness as well. So I'll try to just keep it, try to not to go over 60, 60 degrees. Okay. So, anyway. Okay, that's about it. From my side, I'm going to pass it back to Akira. All right, thank you, Thomas. Uh, that was a good presentation. And uh, so we did the um, Korean noodle dish because you know we have the we have a office in Seoul City, and um, you know we have a lot of um, customers in Korea and serving these type of uh, dishes. And then that was my favorite um, noodle dish as well. And then I think like you know this dish has a lot of potential to be global food, and um, because like it's you know, there are many variations. There are many variations, and then it's almost like you know Japanese udon noodles, like with no roll. And um, so you know, you can make your own version, and then probably using like local ingredients. And then uh, so you know, yeah, I, I hope like it'll be like and develop your own kalgusu dish, and then you know, make it make it a popular uh, food item like in your uh, own region, on, on your own country. And thank you so much for your. Uh, for watching and then your time and then we truly appreciate it and we'll uh, hope you guys to see you in the next class so thank you so much bye